going live, going live on Facebook. Are we live? Are we live? I think we are live. Yo, yo, yo. Tell me what you know. Welcome to the Sunshine Show. Woo! You guys, tonight I have a fabulous, amazing, beautiful, phenomenal bassist, singer, songwriter, front woman for the band Band Inc. Uh, the one and only Juliana in the house. Hello. I'm doing good. How are you, Sunshine? I'm good. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and everybody at home. I'm so stoked to chat with you. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be on your show. Absolutely. So I've been following you for a while now. I know you are pretty young you're only 20 years old yep 20 years old <laughs> and you sing like you have the soul of like a 62 year old grandma you know <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> i mean tell me how did you get into music how did you find that voice awesome so um, I've been a musician since I was five years old. Um, my family, like my mom and my grandma always wanted me to take piano lessons. So they would like take me to the local music shop and I was very stubborn. It was very hard to get me <laughs> into like music for some reason. And I, I had like five teachers tell my mom, like, I, I can't teach her. Like, don't, don't like, no, we can't have her anymore. Oh, really? <laughs> and, yeah, because I would like go in there and like refuse. I would never practice. And my mom, <laughs> thank, thank God my mom is stubborn like me too, because she was like, no, you're going to learn how to play piano. So she put me in like the Rhode Island Philharmonic and they're like tough. They were like, okay, you want her to learn? We will teach her no matter what. And I honestly was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to learn this because this like it's good for me to like learn something. It keeps me entertained. And I actually really loved it. I loved like going after school to take lessons. And I, I was there for many years. And then I got kind of bored of doing like the concert piano stuff. It was really good as a musician, but I was just like, ah, it's not as fun as, you know, I would like it to be. And um I learned that my grandpa was a bass player before he moved to the US. So he had a brother, um, a band with his brothers. It was called the Blue Jeans. And oh. they, yeah, it was really cool. And I found all these pictures of him like rocking out. And I, you know, I brought it up to him one time and he was like, you know, I still got like one of my basses. If you want, you could definitely have it. So I was like, amazed with the instrument like because it's it's like drives the band so i was like i want to play something that can like take lead and like drive the band the rhythm you know yeah. so i told him i was like oh, i want to learn how to play you know bass like you so he took me it's like same story repeats itself he took me to the local music shop and we were supposed to take back-to-back -back lessons but after he came out of the first half hour, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to give you the whole hour <laughs> because like, I, I don't want to do, I, I quit music. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so I started taking bass lessons and it got, I think I was uh, 16, a few years had passed. And I was like, you know, I want to, I want to like start a band and like perfect timing. One of my friends that was graduating, she was like, hey, you know what? Um, my parents are gonna throw me this graduation party, but I don't want to DJ, like I want live music. And she she gave me the task. She was like, get together some of your friends and like just jam. And I was like, all right, cool. I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I got some of my closest friends together and we learned like 20 songs on like a set list. And we we just practiced and we went to the party and we just jammed. And I was like, oh, that was cool. I put together a band, but then like, videos of us got on the internet and i would get phone calls like local venues they were like oh i, I saw i didn't know you had a band can we book you and i was like yeah sure and i didn't think of this next question they were like okay what, what's the band called and i was like um <laughs> band inc <laughs> and so 
There you go. And I was like, oh, uh, it's, just, it's just like two gigs or something. But then we kept getting booked and booked. And I was like, okay, now now everyone knows this as band ink. I can't change it now. Yeah, so yeah, it's like it, it's stuck. And I'm here I am. I was 16 and I'm 20 and I'm still, you know, band ink going strong. <laughs> Wow, and you are kicking ass and you are taking names, baby. I have been watching you. I think the first time I discovered you, it was maybe like a video in a bass forum, yeah. a bass group, and you're like belting at the top of your lungs and you're playing the bass at the same time. And I was mesmerized. And then I find out that you're not even like fucking 21. You are literally <laughs> still so, a man, like, it just trips me out the talent that you were able to like achieve at such a young age. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That actually means a lot coming from you because I've been actually following you for a few years now because I think I came across your page on social media and I was like, she's so cool. She plays with the Rickenbacker. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I've been like following you. And now I'm on your show. It's like so crazy. I've been such a fan for so long. Thank you again. <laughs> it really means a lot. Uh, and then thank you for repping the bass kids shirt there. oh my god yes i just i want to say thank you thank you to you and the bass kids community because what you do and what the group does is just so amazing you know we support all bass all musicians bass players so shout out to the bass kids you know repping my shirts <laughs> Yes, and if anybody who is here watching tonight is not a member of Sunshine of the Bass Kids, please join up today. It is an amazing community, and we just have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, and we, and we support a lot. Big, big support for the fan bam. Um, so, Juliana, where did Grandpa move from? You said that before he moved to the United States, he was playing the bass in a band. Yeah, so my um, my grandparents, uh, they're from uh, Portugal. So it's um, it's a funny story because they they live there. They're they're from Portugal, both my grandma and my grandparents and uh, my grandpa. And um, they actually moved to Africa for a while, Angola, and they actually had my mom. But then they left and they went back to Portugal and my grandpa had the band. And I think he was, um, I want to say like, he was in his 30s and he was like you know because as you know in bands there's drama and he's like i don't want to do no, it <laughs> yeah. never, never. <laughs> so he was like you know what i don't want to deal with it anymore i'm never i'm never touching a musical instrument ever again so then he moves to the u.s and he now he works on cars and now I think it's hysterical. He never wanted to do music, but now he's my sound guy. <laughs> so oh. shout out to him. <laughs> That is so awesome. I want to check out the chat really quickly. I have a lot of people here with us. Thank you guys all for hanging out. We're going to have a really fun time tonight. We got Don. Of course, we got Don McDaniel. <laughs> Shout out to Don. Yeah. <laughs> Don was Don. We got Jake Schwartz. We got Leaf Arrow. We got Mama Cantu. What's up, Mama Cantu? We got Mike Torn, we got Isaac Guzman, we got Weege in the chat, we got Chris Luna, Keith Grime, we got Lindsay, what's up, wifey? We got Margie, my goodness, we have all the whole base kids fam bam here to support you tonight, Juliana, because we love you so much. I love you guys too, thank you so much. <laughs> um, tell me, where are you located? So I am in uh, Dartmouth, Massachusetts, about like 45 minutes away from Boston. The way I describe it, as you see Massachusetts, there's that little hook. I am near the little hook. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> Perfect. And you've been making a lot of trips to LA. I've been noticing you've been playing a lot of gigs at the Whiskey A Go Go. Tell me <laughs> all about that because i'm sure that was really fucking exciting for you yeah that was um that was huge because growing up i i've always been a classic rock uh fan and i would like grow up reading like it, i was in high school and i like was very quiet all the time i would always be reading biographies of like zeppelin motley crew guns like my heroes and they would always mention like the whiskey go go. I'm like, oh man, one day I want to go visit and like take a picture. And 
last i want to say it was last um yeah it was beginning of like uh november we got invited by um, a guns and roses tribute band to open for them at uh, the whiskey go go and i was like oh my god like this is like one of my dream shows and we went and we had so much fun we were like in the green rooms and like you see everyone that signed the walls and i'm just like staring at it for like 20 minutes you know just really enjoying it yeah and we then we came back uh you know we came back to the east coast and i you know we got invited back for more shows like we got we got invited to open for liliac um just so many great bands vigil of war we just came back from that show and we're going back for march 31st we're opening for janet gardner of uh, vixen okay. and then april 6th for santa cruz so i'm i'm so excited to go back it really is like my happy place is la so how did it feel when you first got on that stage i'm not gonna lie i i don't get nervous because i always and i tell all my bandmates this if they're nervous like nerves and excitement are the same feeling you just have to think of it differently i was a little nervous <laughs> because like all of my heroes stood there and i was like um I, I I was like, just, you know, just pre do as you preach, <laughs> you know, just think you're excited. But I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous. But the second time around, I was so excited. I was just like, it's such a great feeling to like, play with your bandmates and do play songs that you write. And to me, like one of my favorite memories was the last time that we were there people were asking to play our songs like our originals that i wrote and i was like oh my god that that means so much to me because uh, you know i spent a lot of time writing music and to see that people like listening to it and appreciate it really makes me happy so it's definitely a great feeling <laughs> and and the best part about you being 20 is they can't try to pay you in beer tickets yeah <laughs> you know like no we're not taking your <laughs> ticket today mister you're paying me the cash yeah yes it's a good point it's a good point <laughs> <laughs> we got reyes cisneros in the chat from taos new mexico i love taos new mexico have you ever been to taos no i have not but i would love to that sounds really awesome <laughs> get it on your bucket list they have earth ships over there if you don't know what an earth ship is look it up it's one of the most amazing inventions of humankind i'll have um, to look it up thank yeah, you yeah it's basically a self-sustainable house that you build oh, wow. out of like clay and all kinds of cool stuff so that's so amazing wow <laughs> yeah um let's see you guys if you have any questions I, this chat is going by so fast if you have any questions drop them in the chat if i didn't get to them put them again <laughs> um let's talk about the equipment that you use let's talk about your bases your amps what you got girl awesome so i have been playing with a fender p base um now I, I have a lot of basses, but my P bass has a very special place in my heart because when I was a freshman in high school, somebody stole my bass. <laughs> so I was just shattered and my mom saw that I was really heartbroken and she was like, all right, go in the car. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. Where are we going? <laughs> so she took me to the music store and was like, all right, pick which one you want. Like, just we'll take it home. And I was like, the P bass. <laughs> Because I just was in love with the P bass. I think it's one of the like standard basses of rock and roll, like has the nice low tones. So that's what I play with is a, a P bass. First, like my amp, I use, uh, there it is, my SVT, my Ampeg. It's like one of my favorite amps. Yes, Ampeg, baby. Yeah, Ampeg. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, you can't go wrong with a classic Ampeg. It's just, you know, has that nice sound to it. Yeah. um for I, that's like i never get asked what gear i use thank you <laughs> i get to like actually think uh like for my bass strings i love the adario those are just the ones that i use standard okay. um yeah and oh that's like my favorite right there my coffin case i take that everywhere because it just looks spooky <laughs> yeah i know you have a sort of like goth kind of style sometimes yeah i like to call it like 
glam goth, you know, <laughs> like, you know, a little bit of glitter, but I also want to look like, you know, spooky. <laughs> yeah own it girl just make i mean you have your own style and that's Thank what you. is so amazing and unique and draws people to you Thank and you i so love much. that you embrace it yes you're welcome thank you <laughs> that you know and it, it means a lot because like growing up i was always like very shy and like now like I could never imagine myself the way I am now when I was a kid because I was just so shy you know I was like the quiet bass player in the corner and like I now I finally feel like I'm the person that I wanted to be when I was a little kid like I want to be like that when I grow up and now I finally got the style that I always wanted and you know get to play the bass and rock out so it's definitely a lot of fun. And what, like, what great inspiration and motivation you are for the younger generation that, you know, a lot of people feel like that. It's hard coming into your skin at such a young age and trying to figure out who you are. I was also, the, I was the tuba player, you know, the, sh you know, not, I was shy, kind of reserved, but I was toning around the tuba, you know, yeah. it took me a while to like find my own and like, you know, accept my uniqueness for what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that should be embraced, absolutely. For sure. And I just wanted to point out, Sunshine, you are an inspiration to us. You really are. Like, as as a girl who plays the bass, like, I always looked up to you. I'm like, she's so cool. Like, she's rocking out with her bass. So you you really are an inspiration, for sure. <laughs> You. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Getting me all red over here now. <laughs> okay. So Leaf wants to know, do you need a bodyguard? Um, sure. <laughs> yes. That's, I would appreciate it. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, we are taking applications and grandpa is going to run a background check. Yeah. <laughs> he's, that. he's like, I, I call him like the crew because he does He's very stubborn because I always want to help him with everything. He's like, no, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm like, no, I want to help you. <laughs> like, let me, let me carry stuff. He's like, no, no. So he does it all. He does like the sound, the bodyguard. <laughs> and I noticed your grandma, she's a good traveler. right? Oh my you, God. Right? My grandma's like my best friend. Shout out to her. Cause I know she's probably watching. What's up, grandma? <laughs> it's like, I call it, I call it my squad. Okay. We got my grandpa. <laughs> we got my mom. My mom is also watching. Shout out to her. We got my grandma and we got my little Pomeranian. His name is Lemmy. He's, you know, it's like the four squad. <laughs> I love it. That's the best. And when you have a support system like that, you can achieve things that you really want to achieve in life. And I think it's really important to stress how, um, mm -hmm important a good support system is it really is and i tell everyone like i am so fortunate because i know a lot of people my age are unable to like go out and like you know do gigs and stuff i'm very fortunate because my mom always told me from a young age like always follow your dreams like do what makes you happy and because of my grandpa and everything, he's just so supportive. And my grandma, my grandma, like this is, I'm so fortunate. I really am because they're, they're like my rock. Awesome. And my mom is my best friend. Oh, and that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I just love that. And she's my support system and mm -hmm. um, shout out to all the moms and grandmas and grandpas yeah. and shout out to all the fams. <laughs> Hams. All right, guys. Let's see. Keith Mello, we love you. We will see you this weekend. Keith. Hi, Keith. <laughs> so my guy right there. He's the best. Awesome. Um, what a gracious young woman. I really like this one. Aww. We asked any other instruments you want to learn? That I want to learn? Um... That's actually a really good question because I used to have like a list of stuff that I want. Oh, um, so I play guitar, but my dream was always to like, like be able to shred, <laughs> like, you know, just do like some amazing like solo work. That's something that I'm always like working on. Like I'm a bass player first, but I love to also like break down solos and, you know, cause I go to a jazz school, so I gotta know like 
all the modes and everything. So I'm like, like a music nerd. I like to sit down and break down stuff. So that's definitely something that I am like currently learning. But if you mean new instrument, I would love to learn how to play the harmonica. That's something that I that's a good one that's that a good is. one i picked up harmonica actually my great the first time i remember uh seeing a harmonica my great grandma was in her living room dancing to willie nelson on austin city limits playing the harmonica and so i had to pick it up after that i'm not the best at it but i can play a few songs <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta teach me sunshine that is like the coolest story ever. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot in common, girl. Yes. <laughs> uh, Rosanna Martins. Love you, Juju. Thank you, Sunshine, for having Juju on your show. You're so welcome. Do they call you Juju? Yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> oh, mom. Thank you for hanging out. And Tina LeMay. Love you, Juliana. You brought. Oh. Tina. Hello, Tina. I get to say like an actual hello instead of typing it out. It's so nice to see people <laughs> joining. <laughs> so we talked a little bit before we went live and you were telling me that you actually do a lot of your own songwriting. Yes. Tell me, um, what is your method behind the madness? For sure. So I'll actually, um, share with you the process. Well, like long story short, like um, I write about everything that like my biggest like writing point is stuff that happens to me. Like um, I, I am like not very good at expressing my words. Sometimes the only way that I can express myself is like musically or just like writing stuff down really helps. So like for an example, like um i recently wrote a song called better off dead that's like our new song we're gonna record it soon but i was on my way back from la now it's like a six hour flight and i had a riff stuck in my head for six hours <laughs> it's not fun but it's also good because then you're like all right now it's like really solidified i have to like jot it down and as soon as i landed i would like when and came in here in my studio and I was flipping through my notebook like for like ideas that I have written down and I would just get like like journal entries that I had from a few weeks ago and I put it in a song and I had the riff down and then I am not a drummer <laughs> but I like to explain to like whoever I'm playing with the rhythm that works oh wow so I kind of sit down with them and I'll be like can you do this and they'll do it and I'm like, no, that's not, no, do, do this instead. <laughs> I, it's weird because like, I'm not good at explaining drums, but bass and guitar, I like have it all written out. And um, then, you know, it all forms in a way that if I like it, I'm like, all right, this is it. This is how I want it to be. And then when the whole the song is like solidified, I work on the melody and then I layer all the vocals and everything. So. Yeah, it's definitely like my favorite is writing songs just because that helps me get through situations, you know, it just helps me get it out. And then when the song's done, I can hope that maybe someone hears it. And if they're going through something, they could relate to it, who knows. But yeah, that's that's how I write my songs. <laughs> Music um, is definitely medicine and therapy. For sure, it really is. Music has always been there for me. Um, it's something like I talk a lot about it because I think there should be more awareness to it. But growing up, I was very picked on a lot. I was always very bullied. So I would always turn to music and it it has helped me ever since I've been able to put all my energy into something creative and try to turn it into a positive thing, you know? So take that bullies. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, sure. look at you now and who knows where they're at and who cares? But my <laughs> goodness. Um, yeah, I hate bullies. I think that it's amazing. I think that that is definitely something, a positive message that needs to be put out there. People need to be accepted that the way they are. And unfortunately, yeah. a lot of times bullies are coming from a place where they're hurting because things mm -hmm. are going on 
you know, at their house or whatever. It's a whole cycle. It's a whole situation. Yeah, it's like a whole cycle. And it, you know, deaf music is like best medicine. That's like my advice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have CJ Shinnaman. He goes, go Juliana. Yeah, CJ. Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Uh, so Luigi asked, what do you record on? So I, I like, I am taught to use logic because of my school, like they make us use logic, but I love simplified versions of the thing. So I use garage band just because when, when I have an idea, I'm just so scared that I'm going to forget it, that I just like press record and it's there, <laughs> you know, and like either garage band or like if I have an idea and I don't have my computer, I just use like my voice memos. It's it's hysterical to listen to them because I'm like like you know, hoo boo, -boo. <laughs> just like trying to like sing a song that, and it and I listen back to it. I'm like, why? <laughs> why did I? <laughs> hey, you gotta get it down, girl. You gotta. Yeah, get it for down. sure. Oh, for sure. It. It's, like, it's like 3 a.m. and I'm like, hoo <laughs> It's really, it's, it's fun being a musician. It really is. Don wants to know where Lemmy is. Oh my God. Lemmy's upstairs. I think he's watching. Cause I can hear his little footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, oh, uh, mama. I know. I, I think he knows that he like, one of us is not upstairs. So he's like, where, where is she? <laughs> he's like, oh, shout out to Lemmy. I, he has no idea what's going on right now, but I love that little dog. <laughs> And Lemmy, um, the bass player, yes. is actually one of your biggest influences, right? For sure. So Lemmy Kilmeister, it's actually a funny story because the way that I learned about him, the way, sorry, I heard footsteps, the way that I, oh my goodness, we have a special guest. Ah! Oh my goodness. Thank you. <gasps> the <Yes>. Lemmy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my you wanna see mom? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we had a special guest. That was the best special guest ever. I love it. I was like, I hear footsteps. Usually I'm the only one down here because I took over like the whole downstairs with all my equipment. But yeah, <laughs> Lemmy is like my best companion. He's actually the first pet that I ever had. I, I was never able to have pets because I travel a lot. Yeah. So I, this year I was like, you know what? I got to get a little buddy to like, it's, it's like just to hang out with these mess. But yeah, let me kill my stir. It's actually a funny story. I only learned about him and the day that he died. And I remember vividly the day that he died. Uh, I was actually in Portugal with my family and like my phone, like it was all over the news. Let me kill my died. And I was like, who is this? <laughs> like everyone's talking about him. And I learned everything about him and I was just so heartbroken. No one introduced me to like his music and motorhead. So ever since then, I have, he's been one of my heroes. Like he plays bass, he sings, he writes like the most badass music anyone can listen to. And he's honestly my biggest inspiration. Like, you know, like the fast music, the drive, and he's just so cool. He's like one of the coolest dudes, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm gonna have to send you a pair of uh, Lemmy socks. That oh I, my God, I'm gonna yeah. rock those socks. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a shirt too. I have one left that says live like Lemmy. So oh I'll send God. that to you too. Please do, I would love to. Thank you. I gotta take a picture with Lemmy and the shirt. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh my Perfect. God. For sure. um, let's see, Joe Prada. It's awesome to see the positive outcome of a person struggling with their peers or more like the low self as team of, okay, right. Uh -huh, <laughs> slow it down, sunshine. <laughs> it's awesome to see the positive outcome of a person struggling with their peers um, and have a positive outcome. I admire all of you for this massive support. Thank you so much, seriously, yeah. It's, um, you know, I always, um, growing up, I was always taught, like, always be positive, you know, Every, everyone has their ups and downs, you know, we all have a low point, but I've always been the type, I'm like a half full kind of person, you know, I always try to 
think positive because the worst is when you kind of look at the negatives it just it brings everything down so you got to stay positive you know even through tough times it always helps <laughs> we need one of those like little talk boxes with juliana on it with <laughs> positive like inspirational quotes for the day like <laughs> we need to start marketing those okay <laughs> I would honestly love that it has like 15 catchphrases like yeah. Stay positive. you can do it. <laughs> I uh, used to have one before I got broken. I used to have one for my pig and he oh, and no. so he push it and give an inspirational quote, you know, and I give him a treat, but I just thought it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love it. <laughs> um Miguel Lava, what's up? Um, thank you guys all for hanging out with us in the chat, hanging strong. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. You know how it works. Um, Juliana, tell me, how would you classify the genre of music that you play? For sure. <clears throat> so I would definitely classify like Band Inc. as like a hard rock band. Um, I've always liked writing like heavy songs you know just because i love like i'm not a good dancer <laughs> i'm not but i love like you know grooving out with something heavy and fast you know so a lot of my to my tunes are either like tuned down to like e flat or d <laughs> i rarely play it standard it's like i don't i think it's because i'm a big like 80s rock fan like everyone tuned down back then so i was like that's cool i'm gonna do that too you know <laughs> I love you, dude. You are so down to earth. And just oh my God. Um, this okay. honestly, this is like the best. Like, uh, cause like I said, I've been such a fan of you. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so awesome. Oh, <laughs> girl. Yes. Yes. We are living the light. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, I love that because I see your videos and I see like, your stage presence and i see that you put a lot of thought into your outfits and into <laughs> just the whole it's a whole vibe it's a whole you know situation and i love the situation thank um, you oh do my you goodness tell your bandmates how to dress or do they dress themselves how does so that it's funny i um i never tell like because i'm the type of person i'm like you wear what you want you know but like I also don't want like, you know, like, I don't know how to explain. Like, I <laughs> like I want to like to look presentable. You know what I mean? Like you, you, sometimes I'm like, you know what? If you don't want to go all out, just wear all black. You know, it's simple, you know, but like, like no shoes, no shirt, no service. You know what I mean? Like, no gotta... board shorts and no sandals. What is that? No, no. sandals. I have like a like a no sandal rule, <laughs> like no no Crocs, no sandal, because <laughs> you know because people take pictures of us and it's like you know I want to look presentable, but I'm not like the type of person to be like oh you can't wear this you can't no because I believe in like freedom of expression you know what I mean um, I'm just I like going all out I like my biggest like fashion inspirations are like Lita Ford. Um, I love Lady Gaga. I know I'm like a rock person, but like I love when an artist just like goes all out because I like I remember like doing after school music programs and I would like theme my outfits. So one time I did like an Alice in Wonderland theme outfit and I like went all red and like puffy, like no, just wanted to stand <laughs> And I'll never forget, I had star and moon sunglasses and someone came up to me. They were like, are you a fan of Bootsy Collins? <laughs> that was the day that was the day that I learned of Bootsy Collins. And yes, I am a fan of Bootsy Collins now. <laughs> Girl, let me really quick. I know I told this story last night, but I'm gonna tell it again really quick. Please I don't know do, please when do. When I met Bootsy Collins, it was at NAMM 2019, and he was like floating down to me from heaven, but it was really, he was on the escalator and it was like really slow, like really slow. And then when he got down to me, I was so, so like starstruck. I chased him down three flights of stairs before I had enough courage to ask him, 
for a picture. Oh my god, that's. <laughs> He's just the coolest. Like he's another one of my fashion inspirations. Like I'm just in awe every time. Like he has all the cool outfits, the base, the star base. That's like iconic. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, absolutely. Let's check out this chat really quick. We got my best friend Amelia. What's going on? Woo -woo! We got Co Colleen Patris. Colleen, hello, Colleen. <laughs> Thank you for joining. We got Jeremy Hill in the chat. We got Mama Can Too, Mama Can Too, Chris Luna, Juliana. What living bass player do you want to meet now? Oh my God, that is a really good question. Um, I, you know what? Um, growing up, Led Zeppelin has always been like my number one. I would, you know, my number one band. I would say John Paul Jones. I would just love to like ask him so many questions <laughs> be like you know what kind of tone do you you know like what's your setting like you know just ask him some questions but definitely john paul jones because he um he's a big inspiration of mine and i like grew up listening to all the zeppelin albums and he's just my favorite he's so smart too he plays like 50 instruments <laughs> yeah um Tell me a little bit about how you organize your practices, how you keep everybody on track, all that good stuff. For sure. So being in a band is, is definitely not as easy as people think it is. It's, you know, definitely hard, but <laughs> um, getting everyone to practice is um, once in a while I've done shows where like, I, I don't think I've said it yet, but like my band is now like a hired gun situation. And the reason being is because like a lot of musicians are in like five different bands. So it's hard to get like that steady lineup that, you know, used to be very popular now as you know, it's not as easy nowadays, but like rehearsals, I've had shows where we just, we meet each other at the gig. <laughs> And really? we're like, yeah, you know, it, it's happened many times. Like the first time it happened, I was like terrified. But now it's happened so many times. I'm like, hey, what's up? You ready? We're going to have fun. OK, we're going to have fun, you know? <laughs> but, oh, I love it. Yeah, like I know that like for big shows, I always get like an, or like, you know, an organized practice. We, we sit in this room and we're like, all right, let's run through the songs. Um, and then, you know, sometimes like I said, it's a hired gun situations. Like I, I get a gig and, you know, I see who wants to play, like who's available that day. Uh, it's mostly like my friends that, you know, we, we play together and yeah, you know, it's, it's all like, you know, like planners, you got to keep everything organized yeah. for sure. Yeah. So do, it's you, so do you distribute like sheet music or do they listen and like get it by ear or? Yeah, so I definitely have my stuff in lead sheet form, but everyone always asks for like an MP3, which I get it, you know, like they, if like there's an example, like for example, if like we, I need someone to play and we don't have time to rehearse, they'll just listen to it, listen to it, you know, and then just practice it. Um, and it, it, it helps because like I play with a lot of think thankfully I play with a lot of professional musicians. They're always on top of things, you know, they're prepared. They know how to go to a gig and play any song. So luckily I have, my friends are really good at playing. So <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Cause I know that can be a stressful situation. And Definitely. a lot of times that's what some, sometimes, you know, not necessarily breaks bands up, but definitely um, makes things a little bit more difficult. And so having that that backup is, is, is amazing. And once again, I just got to say, at such a young age, you are just so impressive. Thank um, you so much. That means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> um, so impressive. My goodness. Uh, let's see. Tina says, you always look great. You rock. Thank Every you. Every outfit, Juliana, you have come <laughs> such a long way, a super talented musician. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. <laughs> And Weege wants us to know he's back. What's <laughs> up? Um, Don says, how do you like Victor? Ooh, it's really awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to add some suspense there. I'm like, 
Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he's he's an awesome guitar player. I have a lot of fun with him and a really, really down to earth guy. I love working with people who are just like easy to work with, nice, because sometimes you work with these people who have such massive egos and it's like, you know, they're miserable and then you get, no, I, that's that kills the vibe. But Victor is so awesome. Oh, and he does this like really cool trick where he throws the pick in the air and he catches it every time. It's so cool. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm playing, but I'm like trying to catch the action too. I'm like, did, did he, he got it, he got it. <laughs> You know, like there's like a crowd in front of us and my eyes are just like, did he catch it? Yeah, he got it. <laughs> wait, wait, so is Victor your guitar player? Oh, he plays guitar, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, Don. I thought he was asking like, how did you like Victor? Of my mind, I was like, Victor Wooten. Oh, okay, of course everybody <laughs> likes Victor Wooten. So he's your guitar player. Yeah, so Victor is really cool. He's uh, originally from Brazil, but he lives in Atlanta. So okay. <laughs> yeah, he's really awesome. So he's actually coming up for this weekend's show. We're playing in Chicopee. And he's just really awesome guy, really fun to work with, always in a good mood. Like that's my kind of people, you know, I'm I'm really easy to work with. Like as long as you're prepared, you're happy, we're in the, we're in the vibe, you know, it'll all work out for sure. <laughs> wow. So he catches his pick every time he but I love that I love tricks and I love like when people just add that little extra finesse yeah and he, he's really cool because like I so I speak Portuguese and he you know he's from Brazil and he also speaks Portuguese so I talk with him I get to practice my Portuguese <laughs> and I like quite correct it every time it's, it's really cool for sure so and that's he, go ahead no, I was good. like, that's what's fun about like meeting musicians. Like, you know, you meet people from all over the world and then, you know, you have stuff in common. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> Can you teach us something in Portuguese? Yes. Um, it's, I'm really bad at thinking of, of examples. Is there anything like um, example? <laughs> teach us um, how to say... Uh, Hi, how are you? All right, so there's different versions of it, but the classic one is like, Olá, com, como estás? So you can be like, Olá. It's like, you know, Olá, you know. Yeah. And then how are you is, como estás? So, como estás? It's like, como yes, estás. Yes. So is it almost like Spanish, but just it's very accent? It's similar, so like, like, Portuguese and then Brazilian Portuguese and Spanish, they're very similar. It's just different accents. Like my mom, like she speaks fluent Spanish and like fluent, like speaks a bunch of languages and she's able to switch all the accents. And I speak fluent Portuguese. Like I understand Spanish, but it's, it's difficult to speak Spanish for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, um, I'm trying to think of something cool too, you know. Uh, oh, I know what to say. I know okay. what to say in Portuguese. All right, ready? Obrigado, sunshine, para tudo que tu faz. So that means thank you, sunshine, for all that you do for us in the bass community. <laughs> uh, so obrigado. Yeah, so obrigado. Obrigado. And then, you, then you can put like whoever's Juliana. There. Yeah. And then what I said was like, uh, for all that you do. So like, Por tudo que tu fazes. So por it's, it's kind of... Por tudo que, que tu, tu fazes. Fazes. You did it, Sunshine! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for Thank sure. You. Thank you for that little lesson. You are so welcome, for sure. <laughs> um, let's see. What's the first concert you ever attended? So this, oh my God. So I was five years old <laughs> and near my house, we have like this, um, we have like this theater and it's been around for like years and years. It's like one, one of the oldest theaters we have. And my grandpa, so my grandpa's a big blues guy, loves blues and the Beatles, like that's his thing. And um, he was like so excited one time. He's like, Juliana, Juliana, I was like, what you know i'm five years old and he's like you're gonna go see a show it's your first concert i was like who is it 
and he got tickets to go see bb king so that was my first concert wow and, like at the time i didn't know what was happening but like i have memory like snippets of memories of it i remember sitting there with my grandpa you know seeing man sitting down playing guitar and i am so grateful that i got to see him live like that that's one of my favorite memories because i got to like spend time with my grandpa like he's still my concert buddy like we go to all the concerts together but yeah that was my first concert it was bb king in new bedford massachusetts so wow your grandpa seems so cool blues and the beatles like what grandpa i love blues and the beatles too <laughs> My grandpa, he's, he's honestly my best friend. Like, I, I'm so thankful for him because, like, he's taught me so much about music. And he's, like, for example, like, B.B. King, that was my first concert. My second concert was Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> like, he also came to the same theater. I think it was, like, a year later. And my grandpa was sneaky. He talked, he, like, he talked me into it. He was like, hey, they're going to set the piano on fire. You should go. And I was like, I was like, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. And I don't remember. I don't I don't think that they set the piano. I don't I don't remember well, but I, I, like he's 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 a funny guy. Like shout out to him because I know I think he's watching. I, they're all upstairs. <laughs> yes. Oh, shout out to the whole fan band. You guys have done such an amazing job with Juliana and thank you so much for being her support system and you guys just watching this interview tonight shows me that they are a very huge support system for you so that's amazing for sure chris says he seriously wants to hang out with grandpa i think grandpa has a bunch of fans oh my god let's see if i can try to get him down <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> he's, he's probably watching he's like <laughs> maybe i'll make a little appearance oh my god he's yeah he's honestly like I wish I actually prepared like a picture of him because he was like in the 70s, he was rocking like the stash with, you know, the Rickenbackers, you know, jamming out. He he honestly had like the coolest bass collection. Like he had like a music man, like a Stingray music man. He had a Rickenbacker and he had a, like a Fender jazz bass, but his first name is Fernando. So he took off the name Fender and he kept the fancy F and he wrote like Fernando on the headstock. Yes! Yeah, and I was like, see, like, that was a cool idea. He's a cool dude. He's definitely, definitely one of my heroes for sure. <laughs> so did you inherit grandpa's bases or does he still have them? So before he came to the US, he like sold them, he got rid of them. But I have his, um, he had a PV base and that was, that was technically my first base cause like, it was the one that we had around the house and I, I decorated the whole thing. I put like stickers on it, like made it all snazzy. I don't Girl, I, oh, girl yeah. my first base was a PV base. Oh my I, oh God, I got it right here. I got it right over here. It. I too put stickers all over it. And um, <laughs> that was, you had talked about one of your bases getting stolen earlier. My this, first base actually got stolen and it was this was my first P base all decked out, you know, just he some nice pickups. I'm like looking at all the details, but he had this one and then we started collecting bases and the second base that you know we got to get we got like an offner because he's you know Beatles fan. He yeah. had to get you know the offner. But yeah, he's um I, I try to like, he's actually been like a guest star, um, like a guest star at one of our shows. I taught him how to play bass <laughs> again for one of the songs. But yeah, like, as you mentioned, like um, freshman year, somebody stole like my, my, my first, I keep saying my first bass. This was my first bass. And then like, I got like a practice bass to have around the house. And someone just took it from the band room and, you know, that was tough. You know, it was definitely one of the saddest moments. But then I got a P bass from the guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, you guys, we were having such a good time tonight. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Um, it's been an amazing hour. We're gonna go a little bit over if that's okay with you. That's totally, <laughs> that is totally fine for sure, for sure. I am. Um, 
I had a question. I had a few more questions I wanted to ask. Um, if anybody oh, else has any questions, drop them in the comments. Leaf says, how do you say I lost my wallet in Portuguese? Oh, okay, so this is, um, so you're gonna start out. <laughs> this is fun. I'm having fun with this today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna say like, ew, I is ew. I like to say like, it's like saying ew, but just like different, ew. ew. Predu, eu predu. Eu predu. U. U. Yeah, u, like u. And you can say like, um, meu, which is mine. Meu. Meu. And like, there is, um, like, you know, it's in Portuguese, like we say, meu bolso, bolso. It's like our wallet, or it's used as wallet or as like little purse, you know. Okay. So all together we have. Eu predi o meu bolso. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope you were paying attention, Leaf, because or, I'm not doing that one for you. <laughs> or instead of saying like bolso, you can say like carteira, which is like another way. It's probably easier because it's like, you know, it's more hard to see. Carteira. Carteira. <laughs> you know, I should have, I should have brought like little cute cards, like, yes. Okay, next time, because this will not be our last interview. Our next sure. interview, you're giving us Portuguese lessons, girl. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So I like to ask all my guests, as I'm sure you know, um, <laughs> if you were able to throw a dinner party, Okay. For any five musicians, dead or alive, okay. who would those musicians be, and what would you serve them? All right, this is this is a good question. I have heard this on the podcast, and people have like really good answers. <laughs> um, number one, definitely Lemmy Kilmeister. <laughs> that would be a fun guest to have because he might, you know, I'm sure he had great stories to tell. Um, Number two, okay, so I know I mentioned I love Led Zeppelin, but one of my other all-time favorite bands is Queen. And as a vocalist, I am like a diehard fan of Freddie Mercury. So I would love that I would be a second guest for sure. Yes. Um, so you said five, one, two. Um, you know what? Bring let's bring back Led Zeppelin. Probably I know he was a guitar player, but Jimmy Page, I, I feel like I hear a lot of people say that he's very like, he's very smart and like, you know, he's very well spoken. So I'd love to, yeah, that would be number three. Okay. So just, let me, ready. Oh, number four. I am a big, um, I know I brought, I mentioned this earlier. I'm a big Lady Gaga fan. So <laughs> Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga's coming to the party. This is like, this is like going all over the place. It's very chaotic. I love it. I love yeah. it. Love chaos here. Lady Gaga. And then for five, I would have to sit because, you know, another female rocker, probably Lita Ford, because I love Lita Ford. That, so we have, so it's Lemmy, and then we have Freddie Mercury, and Jimmy Page, Lady Gaga, and Lita Ford. Oh, so wow. That's, you know what? If anyone was questioning what my style is, it's that whole, just that whole <laughs> dinner party for sure. Oh my God. Yeah, that's, it's, because I've always loved like all different types of music. I, I love rock music, but I, I love pop music too. <laughs> so that's definitely one of them. And what I would serve, that's a tough question because it's a fun fact. I, I'm a very picky eater. So <laughs> Okay, so Colleen in the chat, I don't know maybe if this applies, she goes, are you serving chicken nuggets for dinner? Colleen knows. Colleen knows me by now. Yeah, I was going to say that, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, got, we got Lemmy Killmeister. He's like, I don't think he would be fond of chicken nuggets. But you know what? If I'm hosting it, we're going to give them the fine chicken nuggets. And there you know what? Sunshine, I didn't say this, but if I could add a sixth, add sunshine to the group, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm in 
invited to the park. You're invited, sunshine, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I would be honored to attend your party. Thank you. I would be honored to have you for sure. <laughs> I can't wait till the both of us get into a room and I could just yeah. a hug. Yeah. Oh my God. That would be awesome for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, before uh, we went on live, we were talking and she was telling me she was 20 and I'm like, oh my God, you could be my daughter because <laughs> my son is 23. He just graduated college. Do you want to be my like adopted daughter? Yes, I would <laughs> love to. Moms in the chat like, no, no, she's mine. <laughs> oh my God. My mom, honestly, like I said it before, but shout out to my mom. She's like, I, today I like ran some errands with her and she's just, she's funny. Cause like, I, I like, like you said, like with your mom, like she's your, but my mom is like my best friend too. Like I, I always get a, someone always sends me a picture of her at the show. She's always with the camera. Like she's my camera lady. I give her my phone and I'm like, do you watch? She's like, I got you. I got all the videos. <laughs> she's she's just it. there standing with the camera. That's my mom at every single show I've ever played at since I was little, all the way through like college jazz band. And then like every show after, you can always hear her like screaming and yelling on top of like all the audience and the applause. <laughs> you always hear my mom, dude. And it's beautiful and amazing. And I love it. And I love you, mom, so much with my whole entire heart. Oh my God. Moms are the best, you know? And then my mom always told me like, you know, do what makes you happy, follow your dreams, I'll be there. And so I love like when I'm doing like big shows and I see her in the crowd, I just get filled with joy because, you know, she has a smile. I have a smile. We're having fun. So. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I know that you got, did you receive a scholarship to Berkeley? Is that yes. what you're going? Yes, I did. I was very fortunate. So um, I um, applied, like when I was in high school, I applied to go to Berklee College of Music, which has always been my dream school. And I was very fortunate I received a scholarship. Um, so I'm there now. I actually took the semester off because I've been traveling so much. And Berkeley does, you know, it's a lot of, you know, you have to give a lot of time to it. So I would hate to like be gone and then come back and then be gone again you know what I mean so I'm I definitely plan on going back in September because it, it's a wonderful school I'm very fortunate to attend it uh, a lot of lot you know you learn a lot like I said I'm a music nerd so I love learning music it's definitely a dream come true for me wow that's so cool oh my gosh um yeah I love jazz like that's what I started playing jazz and blues before I like transitioned to like reggae and rock and stuff like that but that was always my number one number one love mm -hmm. um man I've had such a good time with you tonight thank you I've had such a wonderful time thank you again for having me is there anything at, well how about this how can we find you how can people follow you where what are some upcoming shows that you have for sure. So I'm on uh, all social media, like Instagram, Facebook. Um, but like the way my handle is my full name, I'm going to spell it out because it is it is a long name. So if you would like to look me up, it's G-I-U-L-I-A-N-A, -A, Juliana, Lucia, L-U-C-I-A, Amaral, A-M-A-R-A-L. You can find me anywhere. I post a lot, like I post updates where I'll be, post videos, pictures, all that stuff. So if you'd like, if you enjoyed sitting with me in sunshine today, you can definitely check me out. Um, I also have like social media for my band and that's at Band Inc. It's a B-A-N-D-I-N-C. Um, as of shows, I know um, and on Saturday, my band and I were opening for the Iron Maidens, which is super awesome. I'm a big fan of theirs. And if anyone in the West Coast wants to catch a show, uh, March 31st, we'll be back at the Whiskey A Go Go, opening for Janet Gardner of Vixen. And then if you missed that show, don't worry, because we'll be back <laughs> April 6th, opening for the Santa Cruz at the Whiskey A Go Go. 
Um, and yeah, I got I also got a ton more shows, but you can definitely check those out on my social medias for sure. Awesome. And then right quick before we go, I wanted to talk about the awards that you just recently received either this year or last year. I can't remember. Tell me about that. For sure. So um, when the pandemic, before pre-pandemic, I was nominated for Best Female Vocalist of the Year by Limelight Music Awards. And that got postponed to 2021. And I, I, I was very fortunate to have one that was really an awesome award to win. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then for 2021, I was awarded Best Young Artist of the Year by the New England Music Hall of Fame. That was another great honor to receive. <laughs> Thank you. And then just recently, and I, I am so honored to be nominated, it was the International Portuguese Music Awards. I'm nominated for Best New Act. So I am so thrilled because, you know, as, as Portuguese American, it is quite the honor. So I'm very looking forward to that ceremony for sure. It's, and honestly, it is just such an honor to be nominated. It, you know, it's, it's, it's really awesome for sure. <laughs> Wow, congratulations for you. all your success and accomplishments. And I just can't even wait to see your journey to, I don't even know, you're already a rock star. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, son. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. So one more question. Chris Luna wants to know when you're coming to Hawaii. Oh my goodness, I would love to go to Hawaii. Um, as, if there's any music venues out there, you know, I, Band Inc. would love to go to sunny Hawaii, but I've never been. So definitely, you know, keep us in the loop. We'd love to go. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you all for hanging out. I had a blast with you, Juliana. Oh, my goodness. I had so much fun with you. And again, I just want to say thank you to you, Sunshine, for having me. I want to thank you and the Bass Kids community. Shout out to them because what you and the group do is just so amazing. You're supporting us musicians and, you know, just helping us out. So thank you and thank you to everyone watching. Oh, I just love you. Can we just like put your energy in the little bottle? We'll sell it at the merch booth. Um, all right, guys. <laughs> You know what to do once this video is over. You guys need to go follow Juliana on all her platforms. We got Facebook, we got Instagram. Go follow Band Inc. I dropped all of the links in the comment section, so there's no excuse not to do it. We will be back again soon to interview her after a few more gigs at the Go Go and see what her future uh, is going to bring. Um, until next time, you guys stay kind. You never know what other people are going through. Um, be nice, stay safe, and keep it funky. Hey, all right, girl. We'll see you later. Everybody at home, bye.